In this video, I'm going to show you how to professionally process the colors inside your photographs. So one of the most common mistakes that amateur photographers make is they adjust the saturation and the vibrant sliders to make changes to specific colors in their scene. But by adjusting these sliders, they're adjusting every color in their scene. I'm going to show you in this video how you can avoid making these amateur mistakes and start having more professional looking edits. So here is a very colorful scene that I've picked to start with because this is where you're going to see a lot of different colors come into play. I'm over here in the develop panel and you'll notice that I have no vibrance or saturation applied. And down here you'll see we have hue, saturation and luminance. This is Adobe Lightroom Classic CC and you'll find the same thing in Adobe Lightroom CC under color and then click on this color wheel here and you'll see that you have hue, saturation, and luminance for each of the individual colors. Or you can do them hue, saturation, and luminance separately. It depends on what you're doing. If, for example, you want to bring out some of these oranges, you might want to start with just a color and select, okay, orange here, I want to adjust the hue of the orange, make it a little bit more red, increase the saturation, reduce the luminance, or you might want to select a color like so, you might want to do it on a color by color basis. I typically keep the view like so though, but we'll go through each of these one by one. Before we continue, let's start off by defining the differences between hue, saturation, and luminance. Starting with hue, hue comes down to what is essentially the tone of the color. So a yellow can just be a yellow, or it can be an orangey yellow or a greeny yellow. It depends on the hue. The hue is going to change the color. So hue controls color. Saturation. Saturation is essentially how strong that color is. Let's take yellow for example here. I can turn the saturation all the way up so that the yellow becomes really bright and vibrant in this scene. Or I can bring it all the way down and you see it starts to lose all of that beautiful color. Remember, if you take the saturation slider and you push it all the way to the left, your photograph will become black and white. So you can either have it really bright and colorful or no color whatsoever. That is what is happening with the saturation slider. And the luminance, which is perhaps my favorite of all three sliders, dictates how light or dark the color is. So we can take the yellow, make it really light or really dark with the luminance slider. It's one of my favorite sliders and you'll see why in just a moment. I'm now going to continue showing you how the hue, saturation and luminance works on this bright and colorful photograph. Let's start with the green over here on the left hand side of the frame. We can select the green color by going to the green slider here and changing the hue of that green. So we can make it a little bit more yellow or a little bit more blue. Now this is kind of a weird green. So how would I make sure that I found the exact green that I was trying to adjust? Well, I can try and find it using these sliders or I can select this tool up here, which is the adjust hue tool. I can select the hue I want to adjust and now I can drag it down or I can drag it up to change the hue. So here, if I push it all the way up, this green is now becoming more of a blue. So let's zoom out and you'll see that that green is now a blue. So let's turn that on and then off and you can see how much of a difference is happening to that photograph. Let's turn it back on again. Let's continue now with the saturation slider. There is quite a lot of yellow and orange in this scene. So even though this looks more like a peach color, it really has got a lot of orange and yellow in it. And we have orange around the window frames and orange over here on the balcony. So I'm going to take the orange slider and I'm going to increase the saturation. I would never really push anything to 100. This is just to experiment and show you how they work. But you can see how much is changing in this scene, but also how little is changing. Look, we're only adjusting anything with orange in it. Nothing is happening to the blue sky or the green wall over here. It's just this orange slider. So let's say I want this circular building to stand out a little bit more. What I might want to do is take the orange slider and increase the saturation. There, I've only affected the orange color within this scene. Finally, let's talk about luminance. Luminance, as I mentioned, is how light or darker color is in a scene. 
And for this, I'm going to be adjusting the blue sky. So look at this sky here. You can see that it's actually quite bright. There's some wispy clouds that have really ruined the blue sky for me on this day. And that's because there's sort of a wash that goes over that blue. It makes it look a lot paler. And if I took the blue luminance slider and I pushed it to the right, I would make it even brighter still, turning the sky white. Now you'll notice it's just the sky here and anything that's blue in the scene, which is predominantly just the sky. And it's not really doing much good to my photo. But if I push it to the left and we make the luminance darker by about minus 25 here, you'll see that the sky stands out much more. So I can show you how drastic we can go there. And you'll see, because I'm creatively controlling just the select colors I want to adjust, we're getting much better control over the photograph. Let's take what we've just learned and move on to the next image now. So this was shot in Iceland and it was in March, I believe. So we have quite an overcast sky with a little bit of blue up here. And we have some, I guess it's, it's kind of like a brown orange grass from um, well, the weather. You can tell the time of year, there's not much green growing in this scene. So we've got two main colors I want to adjust here. First of all, I'm gonna take the luminance. I'm gonna go up to the blue here and I'm gonna bring it down a little bit just to make the sky pop out a little bit more. Uh, that's probably around where I want it. Let's take some saturation now and we'll go to the river. There's a little bit of aqua, a little bit of green in this river, but it's very subtle. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna push it up. See if I can't increase that saturation just a little bit. Not a lot is happening there. If I wanted to, I would probably try and use a brush instead of the slider for this area. And then let's finally have a look at the hue here of the grass. Um, I actually quite like the color of this, but let's see if we can change this to something else. Maybe we make it a little bit more brown. Uh, it depends on your style or what's your taste. You know, we can make it look really green. I think somewhere close to home, but maybe a little bit more brown would be good and we can even increase the saturation. So we see that that affected the orange and the yellow sliders here. We can do the same to the saturation down here. And now this stands out against that blue background and contrasts with that white quite nicely. So I'll just show you the before and after there from those very quick adjustments. You can see it's quite significant and it doesn't take long at all, so long as you use the correct sliders. Let's do another photograph. So this was shot, um, I was actually in Latvia a few years ago, I was visiting my friends from the iPhone photography school and they took us on this little raft trip down the river in one of their national parks. Absolutely beautiful time of year, as you can tell by the trees here. And using just these easy adjustment sliders here, and I will just show you quickly, you can do these on a one by one basis by going hue, saturation and luminance, but I always keep them open on all. By using these, I'm able to make adjustments quite quickly. So I'm gonna start with the sky as I typically do. Let's bring that down, make it look a little bit more blue. Let's also make that stand out a little bit more. So I'll bring the saturation up. I'm happy with the hue of that blue. Um, let's also look at the hue of this orange and maybe make it a little bit darker so it seems a little bit more autumnal. You'll see we have some green here. So maybe I adjust that to, if I bring that up, we can make it a little bit more green just correcting some of the change that we just made. Then we have saturation. So again, I love, I love to use these color pickers because it, because it allows me to make correct adjustments rather than trying to guess exactly where the color is going to be. So let's go to the orange here and let's increase the saturation just slightly because it's already quite strong in the scene. And that stands up nicely against the green, which isn't having the saturation applied to it. So I think that that makes it pop out and contrast a little bit better too. And there's not much more I do in hue, saturation, and luminance here. I would probably do quite a bit in the, in the highlights, shadows, whites, and black section. But you can see just a moment of editing has enabled me to change the colors and make them stand out a lot more in my scene. Finally, let's look at this photo here. This was shot in Hawaii at a green sand beach on Big Island. And we have two major colors here. Well, three really if you include the green. We've got a little bit of green here the aqua in the water and some brown orange in the sand over here. So let's do pretty much the same thing. I wanna go and have a look at the saturation of the water. I'm gonna go straight in for this area here, which we can see a bit of aqua and increase that saturation. 
Because I'm making a minute adjustment, I'm only adjusting one or two colors, aqua and blue, which you could even argue is the same color here. Because I'm doing this, I can push this to plus 40 without making the photo look really garish and over the top. If I was to do this to the whole saturation slider, it would be a very different story. I couldn't push this as much as I can by using selective adjustments. Then I can take the luminance, I can go to the sky here, and I could try and just adjust this blue, bring it down a little bit. You can see that adds contrast to the clouds, which I really like. Blue's maybe a little bit strong. We have this green of the green sand beach here. Maybe I wanna make this just a little bit greener, which I could do by pushing that hue up. The yellow changes, the green's not really moving there because it's a green sand beach, but it's not really that green, is it? Uh, and then we also have this uh, sort of orange sand in the background. A lot of orange, a lot of brown there. And for this, I'm just gonna do a manual adjustment to the orange, increase the saturation, maybe adjust the hue to make it a little bit more brown. And again, very quickly, we've been able to make some adjustments to this photograph, which I think make it look a lot better and more professional. That's the beauty of controlled adjustments. Amateurs typically use a saturation slider or a vibrant slider, and the end result is it looks too clownish. Uh, you, you know the look I'm talking about. Some people just go with their slider and it just looks like a clown has painted the scene for them. Using these selective adjustments make sure that you have as much control as possible. So with that covered now, let's go over to Adobe Lightroom CC. You'll see the same thing as before. Um, I will go and make quick adjustments. Let's I tell you what, let's reset this. Uh, so I'll reset that. I'm gonna to go to hue. Then I'm gonna use the color picker here for hue, saturation, and luminance. Um, you could also make point curve adjustments here, but I'm just gonna use the color, hue, saturation, and luminance. I'll select the color and let's change the hue. Then I can go to saturation and I can go to saturation for the orange there and luminance. I can select this up here and make the sky a little bit more blue like so. So basically exactly the same thing, designed a little, little bit differently um, and you can do things on a per color basis or you can do it on a hue, saturation and luminance basis. The interface is different, but the end result is the same. So that's hue, saturation, and luminance. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment and thank you for watching.